What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planell, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Kristen Gradney, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> All right, well... Welcome back to the Hot Sauce. Today we have Kristen Gradney, a fellow uh, media spokesperson that I worked with for multiple years and I'm glad to have her here. She's in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, right down the road from my hometown of New Orleans. So very excited and I always talk to people from Louisiana. So with that being said, I'm going to flip this over to Kristen and let her have the, let her have the mic and I will ask her the question. So I guess she'll be in the hot seat now. <laughs> That's so. awesome. I love it. <laughs> so um, let's have you introduce yourself, your journey into the profession, like what inspired you to join, kind of just give us the journey. Go for it. Yeah. So thanks for having me, Angel. And thanks for doing this. I wish I would have had this a long time ago as a student myself. Um, today, I am a senior director of operations in children's health at Our Lady of the Lake in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and have really kind of... Um, stepped away from dietetics in a way and really step more into administration. And I really love that. I get to have a more global impact on our community and the health of our community. So it's been really awesome. Um, I, my journey to becoming a dietitian has been pretty non-traditional. Um, the reason why I say I would have loved this is in high school, I just kind of wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Signed up to shadow a dietitian and the dietitian did not show up. So <laughs> I just kind of abandoned the idea and said, you know, science seems really hard, not sure what I'll do. Went to school, got a degree in sociology, worked for a few years in management, said, I can't do this the rest of my life. What do, what do I love? What am I passionate about? And it was always food and nutrition. And I've always struggled with weight myself and really always been fascinated by the science of it. So packed up, went back to school um, as a 20 something year old got a degree in nutritional science, um, did my internship at the Medical University of South Carolina, where I had a blast. I learned so much, absolutely loved the people I was with and launched a career in dietetics at that point. And I've done just about everything. I was a travel dietitian, a diabetic educator, a dialysis dietitian, a clinical nutrition manager. Um, and then that just kind of led me to management. So here I am today. I do work with a few brands which is really exciting. So use my media training to do that. And I really, again, still have that global impact on how nutrition and food is presented to our community, which is really exciting. So, you know, I'm pretty non-traditional um, and I still hold food and nutrition near and dear to me in everything that I do, but um, not so much a day-to-day -day part of what I do. It's just part of me. Okay. Love it. Love it. Well, thank you for that. I, I appreciate that. Um, I guess as a, to jump into the next question, you know, as a, as a fellow media spokesperson, what did you find the most enlightening or the most humbling aspect of, of being a spokesperson? It was really humbling knowing that my voice was, you know, kind of standing for all of the dietitians across the country. So when somebody read an article and saw my name, they really didn't just think of me. They thought of every dietitian and what I represented. So, you know, I really respected the academy for making sure that we all had a standard message, you know, that we didn't shot. We were able to put our flavor on it, you know, and be individual, but that we really stood united on the science. And I really respected that, um, you know, as I get further in my career, I start to recognize that the other thing is that there aren't a lot of dietitians who look like me, um, thanks to diversified dietetics and others, you know, that's starting to change. But for a while, you know, like when I started this many, many years ago, um, there weren't a whole lot of dietitians who looked like me. So I also carried that with me that, you know, not only is my voice resounding for so many other people, but it also gives people an awareness, you know, young people who think, do I want to be a dietitian? I never even heard of that. Is that something I want to do? Yes. You know, there's somebody who looks like me doing it. So that was very humbling. Um, enlightening was all that goes into the research you know, all of the times that we got to meet people who did the research and provided us the resources, that was also just so enlightening to understand that, you know, these, what we share is really science based and it's taken a lot of time and research to say, yes, we stand by this and know that it works. 
Right. Absolutely. I, I think that's definitely one of the things because people may see our names in a magazine or a newspaper or see us on a video and they're like, oh my God, I want to be like you. And they don't know the, yeah. I don't want to say the blood, sweat, and tears, but it feels like the blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> so like, Somebody's you know, blood, sweat, and tears. That's right. Kids, kids go to bed and then you're up late or you're waking up early or you're, you're trying to do all these things. So yeah, definitely. Well, great. Um, I guess the next question. So if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change and what would you keep the same? This question was tough for me because to be honest, I don't know that I would change a whole lot. Um, if you asked me this question, maybe five, 10 years ago, maybe I would have said, you know, I would have been a dietitian right out of the gate. But now that I'm a little bit older and have more life experience, I really appreciate my journey, being non-traditional, getting another degree, you know, not realizing how the first degree I got in sociology really played a role in where I am today and how nutrition is really a social science in some ways. So I really like my journey, to be honest. It's been kind of tough and tumultuous, but I really appreciate every bit of it. Um, the only thing I thought I would change was maybe I would have stayed at um, MUSC where I did my internship a little bit longer. I really was just in love with the university. It was a level one trauma center. It was just a teaching university where, you know, I got to go and see surgeries and do everything that my mind could dream of or I couldn't even imagine. So if I'd stayed there a little bit longer, I think maybe um, my path may have been a little bit more accelerated. But other than that, you know, I'm grateful for every divergence, every mistake. I really like my path um, as hard as it was. It got me to where I am today. Yeah. I asked that question because sometimes people, and, and I think for the most part in a lot of these interviews, people are going to say the same thing. It's like our own stories are unique. And that's what I find fascinating about this is that, you know, I love listening to people's stories. I love seeing what people have gone through. And I mean, it would be the same if I had to answer the question myself. It's like, I don't know if you change anything because it's kind of like who you are as a person and, and what you've been through. So thank you for that. Um, next question up for you is what does the future hold for you? I know you, um, you were, you've been out of the spokesperson program for, is it two years now? Or yeah. this is year yeah. two? That's right. Yeah. So, so what is the, what is the future holding for Kristen? So the future holds on um, what the future holds, to be honest, <laughs> I've really kind of shifted my focus on health equity and really become more engaged in learning more about it applicable measures of like, how do we change um, the equity of our care and our health and our community and where we live and amongst different populations. So I'm really on a journey now to learn more about that. I really would like my career to kind of shift into that direction. Um, having the title of vice president of health equity is like my goal today. That's where I want to be. Um, and I do still do, you know, a lot of nutrition work in that, you know, opening school-based pantries, food pantries in clinics in high schools and we call them you know instead of calling them a food pantry we call them glen oaks grocery or broadmoor bodega so trying to figure out like those innovative ways to bring health equity everywhere that i touch so that's kind of where my future is headed i really like working with brands um i'm thinking about developing a podcast about health equity and just the history of medicine with minority communities so that's something that's on my plate to do very soon so you know, I don't like to ever say what's ahead of me because I'm a person who kind of doesn't say no. And I take every opportunity that comes to me because I believe there's a reason. So it's kind of your guess is as good as mine. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Awesome. Well, appreciate that answer. And then the final question for you is, do you have any words of wisdom for the next generation of registered dietitians out there? Yes, be open-minded. Um, open your mind, open your ears, open your heart to opportunities. And then also to the communities and the patients that you serve, recognize that, you know, our job is not to be cookie cutter and to apply the same knowledge and science to every single person in the same way. So starting to diversify your thinking, your being, who you are, be open to new experiences that allows us to then have more vision and more experiences to work with people so that um, what we do really has an impact. We've seen obesity and chronic disease numbers just start to continue, I shouldn't say start to continue to skyrocket, like how are we going to be different? What are we going to do different? So start to ask yourself that question. What am I going to do different to really make an impact? Awesome. Well, I greatly appreciate that. And thank you for the work that you do in in my home state. You know, I think that's one of these things that I, I entered the profession and, you know, I was 
in New York City and then moved to Seattle. So, you know, I've gone back to Louisiana a couple of times to give talks and things like that. And I'd like to make it out to the, to the, uh, you know, the Academy uh, conference one of these days, I think the last couple of times, well, we had COVID the first time and then last time it didn't work out. So hopefully I can make it out there and give a talk and reconnect. So Absolutely. well, with that Happy. being said, thank you very much. I appreciate all your time and all your efforts and best of luck with everything. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Angel. So. I'm also on the platform Buy Me A Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in there a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.